Okay, so we'll go, go ahead and uh, get started on today's webinar. Uh, so I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Sean Roach and I am an admissions and recruitment officer at Agonkin College here in Pembroke. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about the business technology and skilled trades programs that we offer at Agonkin College in Pembroke, where we are transforming the hopes and dreams of students into lifelong success. Now I am joined today by my colleague in recruitment, Sash and Sethi, uh, and he is manning our chat and question tabs that are available through the webinar user interface. So at any point during today's webinar, if you do have any questions, you can submit those through the question or the chat tab, and Sash will be able to answer those questions uh, for you during the webinar, or if uh, he's unable to answer those questions right away, we'll be able to get your information and follow up with your answer after the webinar. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first uh, program I'm going to start to talk about today is our business co-op option. I'm actually a graduate of this particular program myself, and this program is a two-year program condensed from four terms into three terms, delivered over 16 months. Uh, and in between year one and year two, you do have the option to participate in a co-op uh, work term as well uh, to get some extra experience underneath your belt. So some quick facts about the business program is the admission requirements that you do require to get accepted into the business program is a grade 12 college level English, as well as a grade 11 college level math course. There are numerous degree pathway options available out of this program, and I will highlight some of those pathway options in a few minutes on, an, on, on another slide. Now, in this program, you also get to create your own very own business plan through the business planning course that's in the third term of the program. And whenever you get that business plan finished in that course, you can actually take that business plan into a bank and potentially get some uh, get some money to get your business up and started. So the business plan that you are creating in that particular course is a full finalized one that you're able to uh, get your plan started right away whenever you're done the program. And I did mention about the co-op option that's available after the first year. It does take place in the four month term uh, from May until the end of August. And students that participate in this co-op option will get paid for their work in the industry and they are working full-time hours uh, during that four month work term so they can get some money to help them with the tuition costs for the last part of their program or they can start saving some money if they do need to make any big purchases whenever they get their career started. Now the business program in Pembroke, it does offer the broadest range of career options available at the college where you can develop transferable skills that are able to be used in several different industries. Now you will learn real life skills application for business purposes. One of the applications is we do have a partnership with some of the local downtown businesses in the city of Pembroke, where groups of students will get paired with those local businesses to practice and hone their skills uh, with those particular businesses while they are going through the business program. So let's hop over to the, some of the courses that you're gonna be taking in the business program. So in your first year, in your first term, you will have the first level of accounting in which you will be introduced to financial accounting and you will study the accounting information and understand the accounting cycle, uh, recording transactions and learning about the preparation and analysis of financial statements. You'll also take a global business environment course where you will learn the major components of international trade of products and services, including marketing, market entry strategies, supply chain management, trade finance, legal aspects of international business and international management as well. You will also take a brand creation for a digital world where you will develop the skills necessary to assess, create and deliver digital media content for online marketing and branding purposes. A variety of applications and techniques are utilized in the areas of web-based and social networking, publishing, photography and videography. Now, so the other courses that you're taking in the first level of the program is your computer applications, your first level of communications, your basic business math, as well as an introduction to psychology course as well. Now, flipping over to the winter term in, in your second term, you will have courses such as economics, where you are introduced to the principles that are essential to an understanding of contemporary economic issues. An emphasis will be placed on the use of economic theory to analyze economic developments accurately and objectively. You will examine both micro and macro economic issues, the economic problems that society faces, and the policy alternatives that governments may use to deal with these problems. And you will have an 
Introduction to Project Manage Management course, where you will learn the basic concepts of project management based on the best practices in the field. The tools and techniques include learning to identify project priorities, assigning and managing resources, budgeting, tracking progress, and communicating with stakeholders. A hands-on practice is provided using project scheduling software as a means to understand the work breakdown structure, critical path activities, and resource loading. And you will also get to learn the fundamentals of marketing through the marketing course, where you will acquire an understanding of what marketing is, what marketing professionals do, the four P's of marketing, which are product, price, place, and promotion, understanding buyer concerns, needs, and motives, product and service selling features, strategic planning, competitive and environmental analysis, as well as marketing strategy. Now, there is also a course uh, or a project, sorry, available within this course in which uh, a group of the students will work on developing a full marketing plan from start to finish. And then some of the other courses you'll take in this term as well as your second level of computer applications, communication skills for business, uh, as well as an intro to management fundamentals and a general education elective course. And then switching gears over to the last term of the program, uh, so this will be after uh, anyone that chose to do the co-op option have, have finished their co-op and they return for their, uh, their, their third term. So you do have a finance course where you will acquire the knowledge of personal financial planning processes, statements, taxation, banking, borrowing, and investing through in-class discussions and, and activities are explored as well. Uh, you'll also learn about business law and learn how laws must be understood and applied by management in the conduct of business. You will also learn how to analyze a business situation from a general legal perspective. The emphasis will be placed on methods of dispute resolution, contracts, torts, employment law, methods of carrying on business, creditors' rights, sale of goods, and marketing law. And you'll also have your professional sales course in this, um, in this term as well in which you will learn the skills required to be successful in today's highly competitive business sales and commerce environment. You will acquire excellence in retail sales and customer service strategies and processes. You will also gain an understanding of customer relations and personal selling, new sales technologies and professionalism in the sales of goods, services, and ideas. And one of the activities that students get to participate in through the professional sales course is an work integrated learning opportunity in which some of those uh, groups where, that, where they were paired with a downtown business, they then get to represent that business in the mock trade show that we have in the student commons area for all students and staff to come in and ask questions about those uh, products or services or businesses. And the groups of students, they know that business in and out at this point so they're able to confidently uh, answer those questions that are that are posted to them at that trade show uh, and then some of the other courses in this uh, level that you're taking is your materials and operations management as well as human resources management professionalism leadership and community and your general education elective course now that we've gone through all the courses let's explore some of the career and pathway options you can take out of the business program so you are able to go find work in different domestic, domestic and international businesses, uh, manufacturing operations, uh, different types of retailers. Uh, you can find work in medical facilities, financial inst institutions such as banks or investors groups, uh, various types of government offices, uh, consulting firms, uh, various large and small businesses. Or if you want to become your own boss, you can become an entrepreneur and explore that option and you're, you're the boss in that, in that situation. Now, this is a, uh, a business diploma program, but if anyone does have interest in advancing their education as well, university is not out of the question by graduating out of this program. We do have articulation agreements that exist with various universities across Canada, uh, in which it will gain advanced standing opportunities for yourself at those various in institutions. One example is you can gain advanced standing into level four of the Business Administration's three-year advanced diploma program at our Ottawa campus. And then upon successful completion of that three-year advanced diploma, you are then able to articulate into the Business Administration degree at Nipissing University. Um, but if you, do, if you don't take that, uh, that opportunity to 
finish off the three-year advanced diploma. Uh, if you graduate right from our business diploma in Pembroke, you can actually branch right into the Bachelor of Business Administration degree in Nipissing University straight out of our program as well. Now, a couple other options would be to explore the Bachelor of Business Administration degree option at Davenport University, uh, and that is a university in the United States, as well as you can apply at the University of Ottawa and into the Honours of Bachelor of Commerce degree program as well. Okay, so let's switch gears and uh, head over to the Computer Systems Technician program. Now, much like the business program, this is a 16th month Ontario College Diploma program, but it is compressed from a, a four-term program into a three-term three program uh, delivered over that 16-month period, and we do have that uh, option for the co-op uh, work term in between year one and year two. So some quick facts about the Computer Systems Technician Program. Uh, the admission requirements that you do need to get accepted into this program is a grade 12 college level English, as well as a grade 12 college level math. And again, much like the business program, you do have the four month paid co-op option after the first year. And the Computer Systems Technician Program is training uh, its graduates to become IT professionals, which are very well in demand and well paid in today's atmosphere. Uh, actually, the average starting salary for a computer systems technician graduate is about $35,000 a year at this point. So that's a pretty good uh, point to start off from. And you will learn how to support various computers and networks, all the while spending hundreds of hours inside our state-of-the-art lab on campus. And within that state-of-the-art lab is our own server room. Uh, so our students actually get to manage and maintain their own servers that are based out of that server room uh, and gain the experience to, um, uh, to run those going forward. And all of our courses, they do prepare you to obtain industry-recognized certifications in the IT field uh, in which once you obtain those certifications, it can open up uh, many, many more doors for you in the uh, IT profession. So the, some of the courses that you're taking in the Computer Systems Technician Program, uh, we'll start off with the first term. Uh, so we have our Personal Computer Systems Technology course, which will prepare students to work with personal computer hardware and technology. The course content will include the basics of how personal computers work, the assembly of personal computers, technical concepts, and terminal terminology related uh, to personal computers as well. Now you will get to explore some networking essentials uh, where you will get to explore basic network design, layered communication models, internet protocol addressing and subnetting, uh, as well as industry standards for network media and protocols. Now you also have your uh, first level in communications as well as the mathematics for a computer systems technician course and a college and career success course. Uh, but in addition to all those courses, you also have your microcomputer operating systems where the students will be introduced to the Windows desktop operating systems with the intention of the students progressing to becoming, having an advanced level of understanding with those uh, microcomputer operating systems. So now we will switch over to the second term in the program in which you will have courses such as your first level of Linux operating system, as well as a technical communication for computer systems technicians, as well as an ethics course. But you will also get to explore PC troubleshooting where you will gain practical experience by using common industry troubleshooting tools, such as power on self test cards and utility software to resolve common problems. Now our lines sorry our labs are designed to test students troubleshooting skills using a series of computer systems with preset problems uh, then we also have the first level of local area networks in which the focus is on how the servers function within an active directory environment simulating commonly found workplace settings and then we you'll also get introduced to network routing where the focus will be on the theory of moving data between local area networks and the topics in this course will include different routed and routing protocols and the study of distance vector and link state protocols. And going into the last term of the program, you will have a network security course where you will be introduced to the goals of computer security, threats to security, and security countermeasures. Students will explore the use of firewalls, encryption technologies, IP policies, security policies, and other methods of protection. You will also take a network services and support course as well, 
uh, because mastering topics other than computers allows students to competently deploy and maintain network printers, install and service projectors, and properly administer cloud-based storage and services. Email servers, telephone systems, and audio video equipment are all being integrated into the IT umbrella of responsibility, which is increasing the demand for students with a broad skill and knowledge base. Uh, so the concepts that you're picking up in this particular course will open up, again, lots of doors for you in the IT field. Now, you'll also get introduced to the database management systems, where you will get to learn, practice, and apply relational, sorry, relational database concepts with the use of Microsoft SQL Server database platforms. You'll get to explore database creation, database querying, and data input, and the emphasis will be placed on administrative tasks, including backups, restores, and security implementation. Now, once you're uh, graduated from the Computer Systems Technician program, uh, some of the career options you can explore would be working as technical support specialists in either the industry sector, the government sector, or the service sector. Uh, you can also find work as hardware or software sales representatives, network installation and implementing, implementation specialists. Um, you can work as system administrators or maintenance workers in local area or wide area network environments, internet or internet environments, as well as Unix and Linux environments. Then you can still find work as customer service support representatives and technical support specialists as, as well. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our Office Administration Executive Program. So the Office Administration Executive Program is also a two-year Ontario College Diploma. Now, this program is also a compressed format, but instead of being delivered over 16 months, we actually deliver this format over the course of 43 weeks. Uh, so the way that works is these students will start in September, and they study all the way through summer, and then they finish up their program about halfway through the following August. So it's almost one full calendar year that these uh, students are in school. So some quick facts about the Office Administration Executive Program is the admission requirements that you do need to get accepted is just the grade 12 college level English. And the program will prepare you for a rewarding career as an office administrator in both the public and private sectors. And at the end of the program, students do have the ability to participate in a two week field placement and takes a lot of those still skills that they developed in the simulated office environments that we have on campus and be able to apply them to a real world uh, work environment as well in that two week field placement. Um, now our office administration executive program uh, as part of one of their work integrated learning opportunities, they will partner with local community initiatives as well. And I will explain a little bit more um, how that uh, breaks breaks out in one of the uh, one of the courses that the office administration executive uh, students take. Now we do have a Gonghu College office administration grads sprinkled pretty much everywhere all over Renfrew County, all over Ontario and even all over Canada as well. There's a good chance that uh, no matter where you are in Renfrew County or Ontario or Canada, um, you're you're going to have a very good chance to run into a, an office at, at sorry, an office administration grad, either from the Pembroke campus or from uh, the Ottawa campus as well. So the courses that you're taking in the office administration executive program include your interpersonal relations course, where you will analyze interpersonal relations and effective digital communication in the workplace. Your discussions and projects investigate important contemporary topics, including cultural diversity, teamwork, problem solving and ethics. You will be provided with an opportunity to develop productivity, stress management skills, and other competencies for building relationships in the workplace. You will also take your first level of document production, where you will develop skills in the production of business correspondence, memos, letters, and reports when working on assigned projects. The emphasis will be placed on proper keyboarding technique and the development of proofreading skills in the production and formatting of basic business documents. Now we also have our administrative procedures course in the first level as well. And the topics explored in this course include support staff responsibilities, time management, frontline reception and public relations, records management, postal and courier services, handling banking transactions, reference sources, researching tools and techniques, and the use of computerized office tools. Uh, through group projects, discussions, online activities, and simulated on-the-job situations, 
uh, these are used to help students develop the skills and the attitude expected of an office professional. Now, in addition to those courses, you will be taking uh, English fundamentals as well as business math foundations and computer fundamentals and text editing. Um, but now we'll switch over to the second term of the office administration program and we'll look into the bookkeeping course where students will complete the full accounting cycle from identifying and recording business transactions through the preparation of financial statements, all while following generally accepted accounting principles. The activities in this course will focus on the manual preparation of a complete set of accounting records. So we're not going to be going into the, um, the online accounting software in this particular course. You're going to learn the, uh, the fundamentals uh, before we get into those. Um, now, in the second level, you do have your workplace preparation course as well, where the students will be introduced to concepts of self-marketing and create an employment portfolio in preparation for your employment search. Topics will include job search skills, cover letter and resume writing, as well as effective self-marketing strategies. And a part of this particular course will include a mock interview that uh, takes place with some of the program faculty uh, to help prepare you for some of those interviews that you might go on in preparation for your field placement. Now, you also have your Executive Integrated Projects uh, first level course. Um, now, through this particular course, you will be introduced to the principles of project management and project management software. And, as well as applying all this knowledge to the planning, coordinating, and implementation of an event. Uh, so I had mentioned that our program does partner with various community initiatives. So through the executive integrated projects, uh, the program will identify uh, a local initiative uh, to partner up with to help them plan, organize, and administer any events that they want to uh, that, that they want to run. Over the last couple of years, the coldest night of the year, uh, which is a done through our uh, the local grind home homeless uh, shelter. Uh, the students have been uh, working with the homeless shelter the last couple of years in uh, developing their coldest night of the year uh, events. And also through this uh, through this course, you will get to enhance your develop your skills in arranging and participating in meetings, uh, travel arrangements, as well as transcribing documents and effectively working in a team environment and producing documents in acceptable in an acceptable business acceptable business format, all while the emphasis being placed on proofreading speed and accuracy. Uh, and then some of the other courses you're taking in addition to those three would be your communications course, as well as your second level of document production, as well as courses in desktop publishing and spreadsheet applications. And in the third level of the course, you also have your accounting practices where you're going to go a little bit further in the accounting stream and develop an awareness of of the underlying theory and principles of accounting. You will acquire skill in analyzing, journalizing, and posting financial transactions and in summarizing these transactions and financial statements. You will also attain a proficiency in the control of cash, banking, payroll, and reporting procedures. These skills will be developed through a series of activities and practical tests using a variety of tools, uh, including online tutorials and online business softwares. Uh, now, you will also have your Defining Your Digital Presence course as well, in which you will get to explore the ethical and behavioral issues with this social openness. In addition to that, you will be introduced to current technologies and software that will require you to think creatively, as well as learn new technical skills and create digital content. And your field placement is also included in the last semester of the program as well, where you will apply the principles and skills learned throughout the program uh, to an actual office situation during this uh, field placement. But uh, the students are required to complete a supervised practical training, including daily attendance records, weekly activity logs, as well as completing a student workplace evaluation report. Uh, and in addition to those three courses, you also have a course in business communication, as well as your executive integrated projects level two, as well as a course in applied office and data management, as well as a general education elective course. And career and pathway options available to graduates out of the office administration program would be to find work in different financial institutions, legal offices, or business and, or personnel administration in both the public and private uh, sectors. You can also find work as administrative officers, 
or senior executive assistants, office administrators, payroll services, or students are also able to explore different entrepreneurial opportunities and become their own boss. All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit now and talk about uh, some of the skilled trades programs. Uh, so I'm going to start with our carpentry and renovation techniques program. So this is an eight month Ontario college certificate. And uh, some quick facts about the carpentry renovation techniques program is the admission requirements required for acceptance is a grade 12 college level English, as well as a grade 11 college level math. Uh, now the students that uh, are registered in this program, you will receive approximately $250 worth of tools from the program. And these tools are yours to keep even whenever you're done the program. Uh, so after you're graduated, you do not have to hand uh, all of those back in. Uh, you, those tools can get you started on your, on your career in the carpentry field. Uh, and graduates may seek exemption from level one of the General Carpenter Apprenticeship Program. Um, and I will talk more about that apprenticeship program in a few minutes as well. Uh, but the big advantage by taking this one year program, uh, our first level uh, courses completely mirrors the level one classroom requirements of that apprenticeship program. Uh, so students by graduating this program have a little bit of a head up in that, uh, in that respect if they're going forward uh, to become a fully licensed carpenter. Now, the students in our program, they also get to work out of our 10,000 square foot carpentry shop, which is located just off campus. Um, but with having such a big space available for our carpentry students available, um, whenever the students are working in the shop, they don't have to worry about bumping into anyone or bumping elbows when they're working on any of their projects. And recent studies have shown that uh, by this year, 2020, uh, Canada will be facing a shortage of about 1 million tradespeople in the uh, carpentry industry. So that is creating a, uh, a large void and a large gap in that system, which is creating a lot of demand for uh, carp licensed carpenters uh, all over Canada, not just in Ontario. Um, but if anyone is interested in exploring any skilled trades programs, the Western family has put out a scholarship available for eligible skilled trades programs in which students, if they get this uh, scholarship, they can get uh, quite a bit of money to put towards their uh, college education and college tuition. Um, some students have received upwards of $2,500, $3,000 uh, to put towards their uh, semester tuition. So some of the courses you're taking within the carpentry and renovation techniques program, uh, we have our building tools and materials course, where you will gain the skills and basic theoretical and practical knowledge for the safe use of hand tools, portable power tools, and stationary power tools. Uh, the students will learn to select and use appropriate materials, fasteners, and connectors in the construction and renovation industry in a safe and effective manner. Um, now, everyone will be coming into this program with a different level of expertise and a different level of skill. So we do start everyone off uh, with the hand tools and progress everyone up into the power tools because we're not just going to get everyone using the power tools right away on the first day. We want to make sure that everyone's understanding uh, the proper use of those tools and the safety of construction, which brings us into the construction safety course in which you will gain the knowledge required for the safe use of ladders, scaffolds and rigging equipment as practiced on construction sites. You will examine the construction regulations of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, the requirements of the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System, excavation hazards as well as receive uh, you'll you will receive a certification in working at heights now you also have your first level for plan spec specifications and codes in which you will get to use drafting tools scale measurements lines and symbols to draw blueprints in both conventional and computer assisted drafting you'll also get to draw blueprints utilizing geometric principles in compliance with industry standards as well as building uh, and environmental codes then in addition to those courses, you also have your um, courses in computer applications for the trades, as well as your first level of communications and your applied construction geometry and applied mathematics for the trades, which those two courses are very, very important for carpenters. And in the second level of the program, you do have your residential framing and exterior finish course. Uh, in which students will develop skills to frame houses and small buildings. Uh, you will examine the Ontario Building Code and the structural requirements pertaining to material selection, span tables, and nailing patterns. You will be provided with the knowledge and skills to install exterior components, 
such as doors, windows, and exterior residential finishes. Now, you, our students will also get to learn to collaborate with supporting trades uh, because students will discover relevant no knowledge of the trades in which tradespeople must collaborate. Uh, common trade interactions include carpenters, HVAC workers, plumbers, electrical workers, architectures, as well as civil engineers. Now, we, will, we also have an introduction to plumbing week uh, that's included within our residential uh, framing and exterior finish course as well, in which the students examine a basic theory and practice of terminology, tools, equipment, and safe work practices used in residential applications of the plumbing trade. You will also explore industry regulations and standards, as well as consider environmental aspects in relation to construction practices in plumbing. Uh, now through some of these courses, including the metal cu cutting and welding and the introduction of, to plumbing, there is an um, initiative that the program partners again with a local uh, business or local uh, group, and they they renovate um, something for, uh, for that local group. So for example, the previous year of this, uh, of this program back in 2019, uh, they uh, were donated a, a house by um, the local homeless shelter and the students went in and they gutted the entire house and uh, completely renovated it and for their plumbing course they had a licensed plumber come in and show them how to rig all the plumbing apparatuses right from the bottom of the basement right up to the uh, the top of the roof uh, so they got a very well encompassing view of how to do the uh, do the plumbing and the any metal cutting and welding available within our shop as well. Now, in addition to those courses, you also have your fundamentals of building science and collaborate and plan specifications and codes, your second level, as well as your second level of applied mathematics uh, for the trades, as well as a general education elective course. Uh, now, career options for graduates out of the carpentry and renovation techniques program. Uh, if you want to continue on that path, you can register as an apprentice and finish off your apprenticeship training to become a fully licensed carpenter or you can find work as construction framers interior systems installers exterior systems applicators uh, renovators door and window installers concrete form workers or desk and porch design builders or you can find work as junior construction site supervisors or junior estimators within some uh, local retail operations Okay, and then we do have our general carpenter apprenticeship program. Uh, so this is a 24 week Ontario college certificate by the time everything is said and done. Um, but it is a little bit different uh, design as compared to the carpentry and renovation techniques program. So for the general carpentry apprenticeship program, applicants must be registered as apprentices with the Ministry of Training Colleges and University and currently employed in the carpentry trade. Um, and then whenever anyone looks to apply for the general carpentry apprenticeship program, the program eligibility is determined by the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities. And once the ministry determines that someone is eligible for the uh, apprenticeship training, they will send them an offer letter through the mail, uh, complete with information of which college that they can go to to register for that apprenticeship training. Uh, now, most colleges do offer all complete three levels of training. Uh, and each level does consist of eight weeks of in-class learning. And whenever students are done those eight weeks of in-class learning, then they transition back into the workforce uh, for approximately a year to finish off their working hours for that particular level. Now at the Pepper campus, um, in our general carpentry apprenticeship program, in our third level that we do deliver, we do not do an eight week level we do a nine week level and uh, in the ninth week the design of that ninth week is the students are in class for that entire week and they're practicing red seal uh, exams so that they're a lot better prepared for the for that red seal multiple choice exam coming straight out of the program um, than if they didn't spend that week uh, spending their time studying for all that uh, so we do have a very highly high success rate uh, for our apprentices graduating and uh, completing their Red Seal certification. Uh, now, something that a lot of people might not know is you can receive money from the government after you complete each individual level. Um, so after you've completed the classroom training as well as your working hours for level one, you will receive a thousand dollar check from the government. As well as once you're done level two, you'll receive another thousand dollar check from the government. And once you're finished level three, you actually receive a $2,000 check from the government. And each time you receive those checks, 
that money you can do so with what you want it does not have to go back into your schooling you can use it for uh, you can use it for food for housing or uh, to buy some uh, new tools uh, for your carpentry trade uh, now the students in our apprenticeship program will also get to work out of our 10,000 square foot carpentry shop which is located just off campus and the Apprenticeship students are also eligible to apply for the Weston Family Scholarship uh, to get some more money that they can apply to their to their trade as well. So the courses within each level of the apprenticeship program. Um, so as I mentioned with the Carpentry and Renovation Techniques program, the courses within the level one of the apprenticeship program is mirrored from that carpentry. Carpentry Renovation Techniques program. So we have our plan specifications and codes course, as well as our welding for general carpenters, as well as our course for safety materials and tools. Now, the other course that we have in level one is estimating, calculating, and layout, because the ability to solve carpentry related mathematics and construction geometry problems puts apprentices at a considerable advantage in the trade. In the math portion, apprentices review the skills to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions commonly used in construction, as well as the process of converting fractions to decimal format. In the geometry portion, apprentices apply the basic principles of geometric layout used in construction. Um, and a lot of the concepts that are delivered in that particular course would have been delivered in the uh, individual math courses in the carpentry event renovation techniques program uh, then coming back from the level two training uh, the apprentice pro students will do their second level for plans specifications and codes as well as their second level for estimating calculating and layout uh, but they will also get introduced to residential construction where they will learn the basics of res residential construction um, which reinforces the essential role of the carpentry trade in home building through theoretical and practical instruction, apprentices explore foundation systems, beams, framing floors, walls and roofs, as well as an interior and exterior finishing and energy efficiency. And then going into level three, you will take your third level for plan specifications and codes, uh, but the apprentices will also get introduced to ind industrial, commercial and institutional construction, uh, where you will examine site practices and layout, soil conditions, shoring and underpinning, forms for footing, piers, walls, columns, stairs and beams, and scaffolding. Apprentices will erect concrete formwork for walls and suspended slabs, install drywall, suspended ceilings, and steel stud walls, as well as install, install commercial doors and related hardware. So I've gone through uh, the business technology and skilled trades programs. Uh, so if anyone does have continue to have any questions of those programs, you can continue to submit them through the, the questions and chat tab. Uh, but I'm just going to spend the next few minutes just highlighting uh, some of the services that we offer at the Pembroke campus as well. So our average class size across our 20 full-time programs ranges from about 25 to 50 students, uh, depending on what, what class you're in. Um, for our business, computer systems technician, office administration executive, as well as our carpentry and renovation techniques programs. Um, the average class size for those uh, four programs is usually going to be around the 25 to 30, uh, 30 range. So there's lots of opportunity for one-on-one -on -one instruction inside and outside of the classroom. And there are five privately residences uh, within walking distance available for students that are looking for housing accommodation. Uh, so those that information is available through our website on our housing list, and you just have to reach out to each residence individually uh, for what their pricing uh, plans are like. And throughout all of our programs, I have mentioned uh, through some of the courses and initiatives, the amount of hands-on learning, community partnerships, and work integrating learning opportunities that are available through the programs that we offer here at the Pembroke campus. Uh, but just some quick facts about the uh, Pembroke Waterfront campus itself. So we are a very small, warm and friendly campus, and we have a great student to professor ratio, as evidenced in our average class size of the 25 to 50 students. Uh, but we are very committed to student success uh, at the Pembroke campus, and we're very connected to the local labor market to connect with that student success. Uh, so if there's any new trends that are happening within a, an industry or a sector, we can try to pick up on those uh, those trends right away and introduce uh, some new curriculum into some of our programs uh, to get the students the most up-to-date information that's out there in the uh, business communities. Now we do offer over $250,000 
uh, and bursaries distributed annually to our campus students. And we only have about a thousand students uh, annually attending our Pembroke campus. So that does offer a really great chance for you to be able to get uh, a good chunk of money to put towards your college studies. And out of that thousand students, about 50% of those students do come from outside of the Renfrew County area, uh, which does create the need for those uh, five privately owned residences that we do have um, running and operating within the city. So there are lots of um, accommodations available for those out of town students. And it also creates a nice um, community environment on campus with those local students uh, making those out of town students feeling a lot more welcome here in the uh, rural community. And we do offer lots of great support services as well. We offer financial aid services for anyone that's looking to apply for OSAP or look for information on um, different bursary and scholarship opportunities. We also have a Center for Accessible Learning in which students can apply for accommodations with their, within their learning environment if they do require uh, extra time to write tests, um, quiet room to write tests, some of their tests in, uh, if they do have a learning disability, or if they fall under the ADHD or autism spectrum disorder, they can register with our Center for Accessible Learning and uh, open up uh, lots of accommodations for them. We also have access to student success specialists as well as counseling and health services, as well as um, access to our co-op support and academic coaching. So all of our student services um, will work with each other to make sure that the students uh, journey through the college is a positive one and we'll be able to connect you with any services uh, to make sure that you are getting the most out of your education. Uh, but we do like to encourage everyone to have fun uh, while, while they are going to school and create a nice work-life balance so that you can learn uh, how to continue that work-life balance once you go into your careers and be able to keep up the, uh, the mental health uh, awareness as well. So we do have uh, orientation activities at the outset of the school year. We have a fall games day usually at the end of the first week of school to let all the students unwind after attending their first week of classes. Um, we encourage everyone to dress up on uh, dress up days such as Halloween. And then we also like to have uh, various student staff um, sporting events such as uh, softball tournaments or hockey games that we have during our uh, winter carnival that we hold in the winter semester and we also have um, mental health in in initiatives such as an ac dog squad dog squad or bringing the saint john therapy animals on campus as well uh, so the ac dog squad is uh it sounds exactly what it is we do have dogs on campus and they are dogs that are owned by either staff or faculty of the college and they are fully trained and they come in and they sit down in our commons area and just take walk-ups from students if they're, you know, stressed about uh, being away from home for the first time and they haven't seen their family pets in a little while, little while they're kind of missing home so they can rest up and uh, get re-energized with some of those uh, furry friends on campus. Okay, so if anyone does have any questions about any of the programs that we offer at Algonquin College here in Pembroke or any of the co programs that uh, were covered in today's webinar, um, I am the admissions officer for the business Computer Systems Technician, Office, uh, Office Administration Executive, as well as the Carpentry and Renovation Techniques programs. So you can always send me a question. My email is displayed on the screen. As well as if you do have any questions about those particular programs, you can reach out to Kim Drake. She is the Business Program Coordinator. Uh, or if you are interested in the Computer Systems Technician program, Matthew Netto, he is the Program Coordinator for that program. And then Connie Pupor is the program coordinator for the Office Administration Executive Program. And Adam Johns is the program coordinator for the Carpentry and Renovation Techniques Program, as well as the General Carpenter Apprenticeship Program. Uh, so again, I do encourage you, if you do have any questions, to reach out to, uh, to either myself or the program coordinators of the program uh, that you are interested in. Uh, but if anyone does have any questions, uh, Last questions uh, to submit through the chat or the question tab. I would like to thank you for attending today's webinar, and I hope that you were able to get some information to help you with your application process and decision process to becoming a student in the fall. Uh, again, you can always send me an email, and we hope to see you on campus in the fall. Thank you, and have a great day.